So hello everyone. Today we'll be solving this problem sheet from our STL sheet. So we will be solving the STL ranges count. So you can just go through it. Meanwhile, if you have any idea, approach, you can tell me. Okay, so let me just tell you like what is that question trying to say. So basically, let me pick up this example itself. So this is the range, right? These are some ranges given 1 to 6, 2 to 4, then 4 to 8, and then 3 to 6, right? Uh, so these are some ranges. So for every range, I need to uh, calculate two things. First thing is that, like if I consider this range, how many other ranges are there such that this range is included in that range. So for example, this range is included in this 1 to 6 range, right? So I would tell, okay, this is the first answer. And there are no other ranges, right? So basically I need to, first thing is that I need to calculate in how many other ranges is this included as a part? Second is that how many other ranges are there which are included as a part on this. So uh, if I can just tell you, so for example, if this is the uh, range which I'm looking for. So if these all ranges are there, right? If these all ranges are there. So I would tell, okay, these all ranges are included in this range. Now, if uh, this is the range and let's say uh, these are the type of ranges. So I would tell, okay, this range is included in this all other ranges. So did you guess, get this like what you need to calculate? Yes? Is the question part clear? Ujwal, Shubham, Neeraj, Harsh. Like what you need to calculate and how would you do that? Yeah, question is clear. Yeah, great. So any idea about how can you do? Any ideas? Okay, so two things. First thing is that let's first calculate the all those ranges. Uh, okay, so like it would first thing first thing is that if you just sort the array, sort the ranges according to the initial uh, starting point, then it would be easy, right? So why I'm trying to do so? For example, if I sort the array according to the initial increasing values, right? So this is how would it look, correct? If you sort on the basis of L, correct? So if, for example, if I'm particularly considered for this range. So first thing is sure that what? That other like. If I am trying to calculate for this part. And if I try to calculate that this range is considered, it is part of in other how many ranges. Then because I'm sure that other ranges which are above it those are starting point less than him. So if I am trying, if I try to find out those ranges, whose, let's say this, this was also range, right? So if I try to calculate those ranges, whose end point, it is greater than his end point. So I would just count that and uh, include in my answer, correct? Yes, correct. Correct, that, great. So for that, what can you do? So I will just, uh, made uh, go iterate through and I stored the end point of the list uh, of the ranges and for I will count that how many elements are greater than uh, how many elements are greater than this this end point correct 
because all those have starting point uh, lesser than this. So obviously, if this is the range, and I know that some ranges have starting point lesser than this. So if I just calculate the range which have ending point greater than equal to this, then it I am sure that this would be contained in, in inside in this. Correct. Yes. So how can you do this? So because like in the PBDS, there it gives you functionality of of finding which are less than that. So what can you do? If you uh, do that, okay, these all n ranges were there before him. So if you do n minus all the ranges which are less than x, like which are less than that value, then wouldn't it be uh, the values which are greater than equal to x? Yes. Correct. So I uh, so this how this is how you can calculate by the using PBDS. Second thing would be the same thing. Like this is the first part calculation. Second part would be what? So for example, if I again that sort and do the same thing. Now I need to find for this range which all elements are included in this. So in this I will check. Like I will iterate to backwards and check because other ranges have starting point greater than him. So I know that it might be included if the endpoint. Of them, it is less than my endpoint, right? If this is my endpoint, if their endpoint is lesser than my endpoint, it would be included. So this is and just like in this, I can just query whose endpoints is less than my endpoint, and then store in the answer. So like, do it was? Do you guys knew knew that like by using PBDS, it became very much easy to solve these all kind of questions? Yes. So just let me show you my implementation. So what did, what did I do first? I uh, these are the ranges. So in the ranges I stored L, R, and I because and I have to also store which all indexes were there. So I had to keep the information on that, and I sorted that. So sorting was based on the criteria that if both have the same, uh, both have the same starting point, sort them according to uh, those who have uh, endpoints which are greater than that. Okay, so for example, if these are there, so I wanted. Uh, okay, so let's say that these two ranges were there, and my, and and, and I'm querying for this. Okay, so if these two had same starting points, I would have sorted in such a way that. Uh, this the ending point who has greater than uh, the second ending point it would have appeared first right this is important okay so like you will know because in the meanwhile i will show you like why this is important so this sorting so mean just think that uh, you have sorted in the increasing order now i declared a pbds set now so this answer one is that uh, the first thing which i told you that uh, n ranges minus less than x that one so first I extract all the values and the n ranges would be what the set dot size right okay also one more thing uh in the set uh the pbds i use a pair of int comment because i needed to differentiate like it might happen that there are multiple starting points right three comma zero three comma one but as i stored in the previous example itself to differentiate based on uh, the starting points i can use the value of index so that's how i use that Otherwise, what can would might have it could have happened that if three was there occurring two times, and if it I would use a single set, then it would have just considered it as once. That is wrong. So that's why user must pair. So I did a set dot size minus all the elements which are less than that. And uh, how did I do less than that? So basically, for this I needed to query uh, which all elements which are less than this my endpoint. So I did the r comma. I will tell you why minus i, but just Think that r comma i is now till here. Now, uh, I inserted that and I proceeded that and stored in my answer. This is how I calculated the first part. Similarly, the so second part. This isn't easy. I iterated from the backwards. In this, I iterated from the first. So, in, while I iterated from the backwards, right? So, I was concerned about all those index which are less than than my ending index. I can just do a uh, less than value and I can just print the answer. Now you'll be thinking of why uh, minus i because like. I did a minus i because uh, uh, why? Because uh, it helped me. Uh, so, for example, let's say two were there, like three comma minus two and three comma minus 
three. Like two ranges were there, three comma two and three comma three. Right. So if we would have tried to query for an element which is three comma five, okay, and if would have not stored in the decreasing fashion, right? If you have not stored in the minus one, then there are chances that you would get. Uh, sorry, there would be an error while calculating. So if you are still confused about this part, while why I did minus, maybe you can just uh, try submitting and take the example like which where all test case fail. Maybe you could get a better idea, but. i hope you like overall you i hope you got the intuition of the approach like how how did i solve yes so any doubt in this